That's enough, young fella. I can't see anyone. Don't you understand? Of course I understand, dearie. It's been a shock. Not half a shock. But you didn't talk to Brood. Brooding don't do no one any good. But a reporter... He won't bite you. He's a nice, quiet young chap. Refined. Talks well, too. He said you had a duty to the public. <laughs> The Columbia Workshop today presents the story of a girl in London whose marriage became a matter of curiosity to the sensation mongers, the newspapers of Fleet Street. Written by Horton Giddy, My Life with Ernest Rule is directed for the workshop by John Becker. Original music is by Alexander Semler. Yes, dearie? He said you had a duty to the public. What's he mean by that, duty to the public? He wants your story, of course. Mm -hmm. And your picture. He's got a camera. My story? Oh, I couldn't possibly. Now, don't take on so. He don't want the old story. I told you he's a refined young chap. All he wants is a little talk and your picture. <laughs> you see yourself in the Sunday comic. He doesn't want to take my picture. He does. Oh, now, dearie. You look all right. Honest, you will. Now, you wait half a tick, and mm. I'll ask him to step in, and I'm telling him he can only have five minutes, and directly you want him to go, you've only to say, and out he goes. If I have to get Cully up from the basement to chuck him out. Well, perhaps I don't know. You wait, half a tick. Psst. Psst. She'll see you. Good. Oh, I had a horrible job. Which is it? First floor? Here, half a minute there. Half a minute. What? Oh, yes, you want your tip. Oh, here you are. The compliments of the comet. Here, here. Not so fast, young fella. You said a quid. Oh, didn't I give you a quid? Ah, uh, ever seen a quid note that colour? Oh, sorry, my mistake. Uh. There you are. One pound. Oh. Twenty pieces of silver. Sorry we can't manage thirty. Now can I go in? Come in. Come in. Here he is. How do you do, Miss Peckham? Mrs. Rule. Oh, oh, yes, of course, Mrs. Rule. My name is Simpson. Won't you sit down? Thanks. There's no need to wait, Mrs. Cully. Well, that's as may be. Do you want me to go, dearie? Well, Mrs. Cully... Our talk must be private, Mrs. Rule. Oh, then, Mrs. Cully, please. You only have to call. I'll be waiting. Mm. <laughs> She'll be waiting, all right, at the keyhole. Oh, I don't think so, Mr. Simpson. Well, never mind. Oh, Mrs. Rule, it's very good of you to see me. May I say at once that I don't think you'll regret it, especially if you'll make our little talk Exclusive? Exclusive? If you'll promise not to see any other newspaper men, any other reporters, just tell them the comet has exclusive rights. Will there be others? Will there be? Oh, yes, it's quite possible. I don't want to see any more. Fine, that's settled then. Now, about terms. What had you in mind? What had I in mind? Yes, terms. We can offer 50 pounds. Oh, I thought... Oh, uh, we might go to 60. 60 pounds? It's just for a little talk... And, and let me take a couple of pictures. I don't want any money, Mr. Simpson. You don't want any money? No. I appreciate you wanting to see me and also the picture. Well, as I say, one always learns. Well, let's start at the beginning. Hmm? Now, how did you meet uh, Rule? Uh, uh, Mr. Rule, I mean. How did you come to meet him? Well, we became acquainted. Uh, yes, I know, but, but how? Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Miss Peckham. 
I mean, Mrs. Rule, to ask questions which may be a bit painful, but you must realize the public demands it. How your own, well, uh, how shall I put it? Your own personal tragedy has come to concern the public. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of our women readers looked at the comet to tell your story. So, you see, Mrs. Rule, you have a duty to the public. It is from stories such as yours that the public gains, uh, gains a, a great many things. Fancy. How, how did you meet him? Through a friend? At a dance? <clears throat> a party? Oh, it's the details the public likes to know. Well, I met him by accident, like. Ah, yes? I was with Ivy one night. Um, Ivy Billings. Ah. She worked with me in the millinery shop. Uh, that night, it was the day after I had I had heard about my legacy. Your le... Oh, yes, I remember now. It came out of the... Uh, yes, uh, well, go on. Well, we were both rather excited. Naturally, if you come to think of it... I mean, it was nearly 300 pounds, the legacy was. We didn't know what to do to celebrate, so we went to a pub and had a port each. No, port and lemon, I remember. Then, as it had been a heavy day at the shop, we had another. And then Ivy said something to make me laugh, and we got the giggles. And I knocked my glass over right onto a man standing next to our table. Oh, Elsie, look what oh. you've done. I see, I oh. see. Now you have. Oh, I am sorry. Um, I don't know how I could... Uh, oh, your suit. That's all right. It's a dark suit. Well shown. It's dry. Oh, dear, I am sorry, really. No need to be. What about your drink? Hmm? Better let me get you another. Oh, I couldn't. Now, nah, don't be silly. What was it? Uh, port and lemon. Right. Two port and lemon. Oh, but I didn't spill mine. I want you both to join me in the drink. After all, I deserve it, don't I? Look at my trousers. I don't think that's any reason. Ivy. You see, I couldn't help overhearing, seeing as I was standing next to you. <laughs> you were talking about celebrating something, so I hope you that me. You're important, Lemon. Thank you. Uh, that's very nice of you. Um, won't you sit down? Elsie. Thanks. Well, here's luck. <laughs> Thumbs up. Might I ask what you young ladies are celebrating? Oh, nothing. I've had a legacy. I don't call that nothing. Legacies don't come every day. No, not for 300 pounds. 300? <laughs> I'll say they don't. Uh, do you live in London, Mr... Close the name, Ernest Brewell. Uh, do I live in London? Yes. That's a bit difficult to answer. I don't know yet. You don't know? I don't know where I live yet. You see, I've been in Canada. I've made me a little pile, and I've come back to the old country to settle down. To marry and settle down. But I'm not going to talk about myself. It's your celebration. Oh, Elsie, we ought to be going. Uh, yes, you see, we haven't had supper yet. Oh. Now, would you think me fresh if I asked you two young ladies to have a bit of supper with me? Remember, oh, I'm a stranger in London. It would be real kind of you to take pity on me. I don't know whether... Oh, now, do. I know I'm a rough diamond like all colonials. Maybe we haven't been properly introduced. Oh, well, my... But <laughs> is that my fault? What I'd like to do is to have a bite to eat and then go to the second house at the Palladium. How's that? Oh, that would be... Oh, Ivy, we are celebrating, aren't we? Well, it's... Very kind of Mr. Rule. It'll be still more kind if you ladies will join me. Come on now. It's settled. Why, I don't know your name. lovely evening. Thank you. The pleasure's mine. Well, we'd better say good night. When can I see you again? Do you want to? Tomorrow? When do you leave your work? Six. I have a previous appointment. Oh. Sorry, Ivy. But you, Elsie, I'll be waiting for you outside at six. At six. Good night, Elsie. Good night. 
Ernest? Very lovely, Mr. Simpson. And you married Mr. Rule on the 17th of June? Yes. Miss... Uh, Mrs. Rule, hmm? uh, during the trial, your friend Ivy told the court that you had told Mr. Rule about your legacy at your first meeting. Uh, you denied... I that... don't remember that. Now, Mrs. Rule, you just... Told... I don't remember. All right. Oh, well, what, what happened next? After we were married? Yes. No. We moved into a flat, a home of our own. I was Mrs. Ernest Rule, and I used to plan surprises, little ones, the way I used to dream I would if ever I got married. I was glad I had, for sometimes Mr. Rule needed to have things brightened. Not very often, of course. Ernie? Ernie, darling. Mm. Daydreaming? Quite in a brown study, you were. Supper's ready. I'm not hungry. Oh, Ernie, and I've got a lovely surprise. A lovely cut of salmon. I'll try a little. <laughs> Don't you like salmon? It's all right. Ernie, darling, something is the matter. Got something on my mind. What? Money, as usual. Oh. Like to hear about it? Yes, I would. You know I hate to see you worried. It's this Canadian money. All these blasted formalities before I can get it over. And here I am stuck for a little money when I've got things on that would make us a packet. If only I could put my hand on capital. It is a shame. All that money lying idle in Canada. I feel so rotten having used your savings oh, so far. Oh, no, no. I've been proud to lend them to you. But you know, Ernie, we're getting nearly to the end of them. What with the rent and the housekeeping and your new, new suit. I had to have it. Of course, of course you did, darling. Only it made my money go rather fast. But you haven't touched the legacy yet. No. Elsie. Hmm? I've got a chance. A wonderful chance. I could make a packet if only I had a bit of ready cash. It's the sort of a chance you only get once in a blue moon. Could you let me have a hundred out of the legacy? It'll only be for a couple of weeks. I'll have my own money from Canada by then. A hundred pounds? I can probably double it. Then I can pay you back at once. Well? I promised I wouldn't break into the legacy. Promised though? Ivy. What's Ivy got to do uh, with it? We're as the little wife, aren't we? Uh, I was just asking for a loan, not a <laughs> gift, Mark. Give a loan for a few days. Ernest, I would if I could, but I can't. I can't touch it. What do you mean? I... I thought it was best when we were getting married... I went to a lawyer and had it tied so that I couldn't be tempted to spend it. He put it into shares. It, it's all tied up legally. I can't touch it. Ivy said... I mean... Ivy said? So, so it was Ivy, huh? Eh? Oh, Ernie... You didn't trust your own now. No, I'd like no Ernie. It, it, it wasn't for that, really. I did it for you. For me? Yes. Ah. I, 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 want, I want it kept safe for you. When I die. When you... Die? Yes. Why, Elsie? Do you mean you've left it to me? Of course. Well, come and give me a kiss, Ducky. <laughs> Lost if I won't go right out now and make a will myself. No. You shall have every penny of my little pile. Oh, don't talk to me of you dying, Ernie. I just couldn't bear it. Nobody's going to die. You're not going to anyway, Ducky. No. You're not going to die, Elsie. What an idea. What an idea. Come on, Elsie girl. No more crying. Let's hear you laugh. Isn't it silly to sit grizzling about wheels and tombstones? Come on, laugh. Laugh or I'll spank you. Uh, and you are funny. You won't be serious. <laughs> Uh, 
Rose. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Scully. Isn't it a lovely day? Seems much as usual. Nice to see you so cheerful. <laughs> My Ernie's coming home today. Ah, been away quite a while, hasn't he? Oh, no. Is he a commercial? No, but he has to travel a lot on business. He seems to, my dear. As far as I can see, he's more often away than here. Oh, no. You take my advice, my dear, and keep him at home more. Husbands are up to no good when they're away too much. <laughs> That's my experience anyway. It doesn't follow because it was your experience that it'll be mine, Mrs. Cully. Good morning. <laughs> Mr. Rule went away quite often on business? Yes, on business. How long was Mr. Rule away the time that you just told me about? Well, it, it was shorter than any time he had been away before. Oh. Mrs. Rule, before the trial, had you ever heard of Grace Stokes? No. Or Doris Jameson? No. Oh, all right, Mrs. Rule. Then, then just tell me what happened when Mr. Rule came back, hmm? Well, there was nothing special about it. It was just like the other times. Oh, well, nevertheless, I would like to hear about it. Well, just before the evening meal, the door opened, and there was Ernie. What's <laughs> your I am glad to see you. And aren't you looking well? I believe you've been to the beach on the quiet. No such luck. <laughs> How did your business go? Fine. We're really on the edge of big things, Gracie. Gracie? Uh, Elsie, I mean. Who's Gracie? Gracie? Oh, I don't know. Gracie Field, I expect. I, uh, I heard her on the wireless at my hotel last night. Must have got the name on the head. Gone to be jealous of Gracie Field. Oh, silly. <laughs> Supper's in the oven. When would you like it? Right away. I'm starving. <laughs> they don't give you enough to eat at these hotels. I've got Irish stew. And a nice cup of tea. Yes, kettle's on the boil. Good. You dish up the stew, I'll make the tea. No, you're not to bother. Of course I will. I'm a dad. Now, <laughs> where'd you keep the tea? Above your head. Oh, yes. Six spoonfuls, that's right. Mm -hmm. Shall I wet it now? Now I'll be half a tick. There, now, the stew's all ready. Right. You sit down, I'll bring the tray. Oh, no, darling. Go on. <laughs> all right. Have you lost something? Ernie, have you lost something? Coming now. Uh, put it down here. Oh, I'm pouring out. <laughs> Silly Ernie. Where did you go this time, darling? Birmingham, was it? Macclesfield. <laughs> I do hope you like this stew. It smells good, doesn't it? Fine. There's your tea. <laughs> Thank you. My, it looks strong. That's how tea should be. <laughs> Macclesfield, that's in the north, isn't it? Yes. Not a bad place. You've been keeping well? Oh, yes. No uh, feeling bad? No. Good. How's the tea? Oh. Oh, it, it's uh, rather bitter. Seems all right to me. Try it again. It's all right. It is bitter, only funny taste is burning. I'd like that. First thing you do when I get home is complain of the way I make tea. Oh, Ernie. Drink yeah. it up and I'll give you some of that wake. Oh, well, perhaps some water in this. There you are. There, that looks better. Try it now. I don't know. It's still funny. Imagination. It's strong taste. It's a funny burning taste. Give me a cup. <laughs> I'll swill it down. No, no, you needn't go to the Don't sink. Don't take a minute. <laughs> I'll give you another cup. I say your stew's extra good tonight. Is it? I'm glad you like it. Good thick gravy. <laughs> Don't get that away from home. There you are. Try this. It's weaker. Ah. Uh -huh. Yes, now it's all right. There you are. Imagination. Ah, <laughs> oh, Ernie, it's nice to have you back. I get a bit... <laughs> I get a bit miserable. Miserable white hair. Ernie. Here, 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 what is this? Ernie, Ernie. There now, Ducky. Take it easy. Oh, 
Oh, Ernie. Take it easy. Hold on to my hand. Oh, Ernie. It's better, better now. Now. Now, now, be quiet. Gone now. Oh, Ernie, I am sorry. Don't you worry. Pain gone. It's gone now. Take it easy. Like a sip of brandy? Brandy? Ernie, I shouldn't. Try some. I couldn't. Everything I, I take seems to taste funny somehow. Burning sort of taste. It'll go. Oh, I do feel awful spoiling things like this. Uh, Ernie, I think I ought to see a doctor. Not one of those chaps. <laughs> Why... Why, the first thing he'll do would be to talk about an operation. You trust me, Elsie girl. I've knocked about the world and picked up a sight more knowledge than some of these pill pushers. I'll nurse you. Oh, darling, that's, that's wonderful. There's nothing you can do except take it easy. Mm -hmm. I reckon you're out of it now. I do think I ought to ask a doctor. It'll do more harm than good. But don't think I grudge the expense. Tell you what. What? You just trust me. That's me. Take care of everything. And when I get back, why I... back? Ah, there. Now, I hadn't meant to tell you till after our little party. I was going to have to go away again tomorrow. That's why I could come back so soon. Oh, and to think I spoiled the lovely whole evening. That's all right. But, Ernie, what if I should get sick while you're gone? Can't I go to a doctor then? You won't no, no, do don't it. be frightened. If you feel that way, I just won't go. I'll stay and see that you're completely well. No, I don't want to keep you... Close. I'll see that you're all right. And that was the very night that he came home. Yes. How long was that before the last night? Well, he took care of me the next day and the next and the next. And then on the last night, on the last night, I guess I fell asleep and didn't hear him. Elsie, girl. Elsie. Huh? Supper's all ready. Oh. Why, Ernie, I didn't even know you had come in. You must have dropped off. I was that tired. Poor kid. Oh, but Ernie, you shouldn't have laid the table while you put the salmon out and all. I bought it ready cooked. Extravagant. Oh, it don't matter now. See the wine? Real burgundy. French burgundy. Even that's all ready. Sit down. Oh. Ducky, I've another surprise. What? We'll be out of our troubles now. My lawyer called me today, and he says the money from Canada is due tomorrow. Oh, Ernie. And first off, I'm going to give you 25 pounds to buy some new clothes. Oh, Ernie. I'll make it 50, Elsie. Oh, you are kind to me. Now, before we start, a toast, as they say, uh. to Elsie. My dear wife. Darling. My dear wife. Here, you only sipped. Take a gulp. It won't hurt. No, no. no it, it burned something terrible. Only I do believe I'm going to be bad again. It, it's that awful taste just like before. Now, you do as I say. The no. wine will take it away. That's what I bought it for. No. Drink it down quick and then you'll feel all right. I don't fancy it. Do as I tell you. Go on, drink it down. I can't. One big gulp. Go on. No. Forget it, Dover. Go on. Go on. What's that? I, I don't know. Any truth? A policeman. And it's true I arrest you and George a murdering right out. <laughs> Examination. Miss Pickham, I know these questions are painful, but the jury has the right to hear you answer them. You went to a marriage with the accused on the 17th of June, 1937. Yes. At that time, before the marriage ceremony, did the accused know you had just received a legacy of several hundred pounds? Miss Pickham. 
Miss Peckham, didn't you tell him about it when he was courting you? I suggest to you that you told him of the legacy the first time you met. Remember that that is what Miss Ivy Billings has told the court. She lied. Miss Peckham. She lied. Very well. That's for the jury to decide. However, will you tell us this? Had you ever heard before or after your marriage the name of Grace Stokes? Grace Stokes? Of Doris Jameson? Ada MacDonald? Or Pauline Scott? Ada MacDonald? Or Pauline Scott? My lord, I'm afraid I must ask your lordship's leave to treat this witness as a hostile witness. Very well, Sir Ronald. Thank you, my lord. Miss Peckham, you have heard of these women. Now consider your answers carefully. Your husband, the prisoner, did marry Grace Stokes. Did marry Doris Jameson and Ada MacDonald and Pauline Scott. I use the word marriage. That is not correct. It was bigamy. The prisoner there, by evidence, was courting Grace Stokes while his first wife, Doris Jameson, lay dying of poisoning. The same Grace Stokes who had a legacy of 600 pounds which she left to him. Now, Miss Pickham, may I ask you the question? Have you ever heard before or after your marriage the name of Grace Stokes? It is silly to go on. I never did. Your worship, sir, do I have to answer him? Because it's all lies, the whole of it. And he isn't like that. He isn't. I swear he isn't. Shouldn't I know? I'm his wife, aren't I? He loves me, I tell you. This man goes on. Now, 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 Miss Peckham, you <laughs> must compose yourself. You all call me Miss Peckham. It's insulting. I'm Mrs. Rule. Very well, then, Mrs. Rule. Now, you must calm yourself, Mrs. Rule. Sir Ronald is being very patient. Believe me, had I known you prefer to be called Mrs. Rule, I should have done so. And please believe also... There is no question of animus, Mrs. Rule. On the contrary, there is a feeling of, of great pity. I don't want your pity. Don't cry. That's all over now. But it isn't true what they said, Mr. Simpson. Those women tricked him into marrying them. It was only me he loved. I was his real wife. Please, put that in your newspaper. Yes, but Mrs. Rule, what our readers will want to know is... He loved me. I was his real wife. He wouldn't ever have harmed me. Even if what they said was true, he did it for me. Please, Mrs. Rule, please, speak up. Go away. But, but your picture, Mrs. No, go away. Uh, perhaps I could come back in the morning. Uh, I'll come back in the morning, Mrs. Rule. Good night, Mrs. Well? Well what? Queer sort of story, ain't it? Queer is right. Would you believe it? She keeps his photo in her room. Every week, the Columbia Workshop presents a different kind of radio program with accent on the unusual. Today's author was Horton Giddy. Today's workshop director, John Becker. Elsie Peckham Rule was played by Charlotte Holland. Ivor Francis appeared as Ernie. And Bertrand Taswell was the reporter. Original music was composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. Don Baker speaking. 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. The Columbia Broadcasting System.